in this video we're going to show you guys how to actually bait up the traps and use them. So let's go. Hey Roman Catcher here, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here and you want to learn about lobster fishing, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. This is part three of our Hoop Netting 101 series. In part one, I'll help you choose the best hoop net for the job. In part two, we'll help you set up that hoop net from taking it off the shelf to ready to fish. And in this part three, I'm going to take the hoop net out and actually fish it and see what happens. Also, on Tuesdays and sometimes on Saturdays, I, I live stream for my kayak, my fishing sessions on Twitch. If you're interested in that, go check out romancaster.com forward slash Twitch. I'll put a link for it right here. It'll also be in the description of this video. So go over there, hit follow, and you'll get notified when I am live fishing from the kayak. We're almost ready to go. You, you absolutely must have a fishing license. This is my fishing license. It's all crumpled up. And you're gonna have to get a lobster card. This is a lobster card. And that's, when you get it, you're gonna be like, what, why is it so long? Let me explain why it's so long. Here we go. So basically, you have to tell uh, the Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, how many lobsters you caught. You have, to even, you have to even register when you actually attempted to catch lobster. So I'm gonna show you mine real quick. Uh, you have a couple columns. You have the month, the day, the location code, the gear code and how many lobsters you got that on that on that attempt. Okay, so let me show you where, where you get all that stuff. Um, once you get past all of the all the spaces for you to log all of your attempts, at the very bottom of that, there's a space that says harvest report submission. It gives you like a little bit of some instructions, and then um, it gives you the rules. Make sure you read all this stuff. And then it gives you an example of how to fill it out right here. And then you get to the section where it has all the different gear codes that you're going to use and the location codes that you need to put into this, this thing. So the day is off. The month is obvious. The day is obvious. Whatever month or day you're going. And then the location code. It just depends where you're going to fish. So for example, sit here. We're going to go to Cabrilla Beach, Jetty, San Pedro, Breakwater. The location code is location 55. Okay, so like here in San Diego, we have like Mission Bay, for example, a lot of people hooked up there. So we have Mission Bay, that's location code 23, if you're going to fish in the jetty, sorry, in the, in the, in Mission Bay. And then it's location code 22, if you're going to, if you're going to hoop net on the jetties. So those are two different location codes. So you have to fill that out before you get on your kayak or, or boat. And that way, in case the game warden stops you. You should, if the game warden stops you and you're in the middle of fishing for, for lobsters, you should have all of this filled out. It'll have the, the date, sorry, the month, the day, the, lo the gear code, the location code, and a, a blank space because you haven't finished the day yet. But once you're done fishing, you have to put a zero if you didn't catch anything. So like this, right? Should all be like that, okay? Um, the other thing is the gear code. So the gear code is basically you're specifying how you're attempting to catch the lobsters and in this case for the type of hoop nets that we're using in this video uh, in this whole series we're using gear code 2 because a hoop net rigid will not collapse so our hoop nets don't collapse to the volcano style so that's what we're using we're using gear code 2 and as you can see from my previous attempts let me block my locations um, 2 is my hoop net and 4 huh, I, wonder what, I wonder what gear code 4 is for let me look Gear code four is skin diving, skin diving using a snorkel. So that's what we did on a couple of sessions. And one more very important thing to cover, if you are fishing at night and you get to midnight and you haven't caught any lobsters by midnight, then you put a zero and you fill out your card again and leave the blank space for the next day because that's going to be technically considered the next day. Okay. So if you're fishing through the night, you're going to to have, you're gonna have to use two lines on your lobster card so make sure you're aware of that you want to get to shore and it's like three in the morning or four in the morning or two in the morning or one in the morning that's technically the next day so you're gonna you have to refill out your lobster card put however, put however many lobsters you caught the day before and how many lobsters you, you caught after it was midnight and even though technically you're allowed to have seven per day you're not allowed to hold more than seven lobsters okay, that's a limit of possession so you can't have 
more than than seven lobsters in possession even if you caught uh some the night some at the beginning of the night which which was like a, on a different day and then after midnight you caught some different ones as long as those two those two numbers of lobsters add up to seven you're okay if, it, if it's more than seven you're over the limit you're basically breaking the law so you have to you can only possess seven at the end of the season you are supposed to mail this lobster card in to the department of fish and wildlife okay if you don't they'll know it, they'll they'll be expecting it if they don't receive it they'll charge you an extra fee next season because you didn't submit your lobster card so you got to submit this at the end of the season um this one is these are good um you don't have to get one next year like once you get to new year's this 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 card for the season it's good for the season not for the year so it's good for since 10 3 2020 to 3 17 2021 is when the lobster season close closes okay so that's what you need um again you can get these lobster cards at the same place you bought your license you can order your license and a lobster card online and it takes a couple of days for you to receive it um, you can fish with a temporary license that you get from the website but you cannot hoop net with a temporary license you have to have the actual card thing to hoop, to hoop net so uh, a lot of good places here in town that, that can print these out I actually got this one printed out at Dana Landing right there by the boat ramp uh, Dana Landing Market awesome place great sandwiches <laughs> and I always cruise by there uh, to check out the lures before I before I launch from that boat ramp. So it's a good it's a good spot here in San Diego. Most tackle shops have it. I know he's kind of in tackle has their own printing machine. Uh, Turner that Turner's Outdoors uh, has a printing machine. Um, maybe even Walmart has printing machines. I'm not, I'm, and I'm pretty sure they, they do also do lobster cards. Anyway, uh, yeah. So make sure you have the, you have your lobster card and your fishing license before you attempt any of this stuff because you get a big fine if you're caught with hoop knitting gear and you don't have the right have the right stuff even if you don't have a lobster you can get in trouble for having the gear it could be the gear on the kayak or it could even be the gear at the beach you're getting ready to load and you forgot your lobster card if they stop you you don't have a lobster card you get in trouble okay it's like it's like fishing without a license okay so let's jump into this video uh we're gonna take this hoop net out and actually put it to work so let's go first off we need to figure out how to bait them so let's do that now i like to use salmon heads from the asian market to bait my traps but you can go out and make bait or keep old carcasses you have for fish that you've processed in the past. That also makes good bait. Uh, but you want to make sure it's frozen while it's still good. You don't want rotting bait. Okay, so you want to make sure it's frozen before it goes bad. And then you can put it in the lobster trap while it's frozen and it'll, it'll do just fine. Okay, so what I have here is I have one salmon head that I cut in half and I used on a previous session. Okay, here's my used salmon head. I cut this in half and I saved it from the last session. So I'm going to open this up. I learned how to do this from Captain Scotty. So we're here. Basically, I cut them in half. I'm in head, and I cut it in half this way, the long way. And so I put one in each trap. So let's put one in the top trap. Right there. And put, let's put the other one right here in the second trap. And put that in there. I'm gonna do half, half of a salmon head in each trap. I'm gonna close the close the little fence, and let me show you how I, how I button the rest of it up. Take off this glove. Okay, here we go. We'll start with this one. This uh, lobster bait trap has got a little door, right? And it comes with this clip that keeps it closed here, but that. The seals can still open that and get in there. So what you want to do is you want to zip tie this end together so it doesn't so the seals can't open it up. I'm gonna do two zip ties, two zip ties per, per trap. So one on each corner. I'm gonna loop it through a couple times. Like that. And then I'm gonna put it through. There, cut off the extra. And I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna do another one on the other corner. Loop it through twice. One. There you go, loop it through twice. 
and then zip tie it down. Okay. So one is done. Let's finish off the second one. Again, all we're doing is closing the trap, putting the bungee on, and then we're going to zip tie the opening together so the, so the seals can't get in there. In there. Done. Alright, these traps are baited, they're ready to go in the water, um, let's go fish these. Alright guys, I'm back. I went out last night and I got a couple lobsters actually. Got my little helper today. So let me just show you guys what you need to deal with these bugs. Okay, so for sure get a pair of gloves. Something that you can't poke through. Uh, these, these work well, but the top is just cloth. So if the, if the lobster gets a hold of your hand, it's going to go like this. It's going to wrap around your hand. It's going to, the, the lobster's uh, legs are going to go right into this glove. This part's the only way to uh, to grip them. Okay. So two gloves. I wear these when I'm getting them out of the hoop. So here's my measuring gauge. If you guys don't have a measuring gauge, you have to get a measuring gauge. It's part of the law. If you if you if you're caught with a lobster and don't have a measuring gauge, it's this is gonna you're basically poaching because you have to prove that he measured it. Okay. I keep an extra one in the car. I keep an extra one in my. Uh, in my media bag, in my in my dry bag where I have all my camera gears and batteries, and then I keep this one in my pocket with the floaty. If I drop it, it'll float, and uh, I'll always have a gauge in case I lose the first or second. Okay, so that's make sure you have more than one, at least three. So here's the actual lobster. It's still alive. California spiny lobster. So the way you measure it is this part of the gauge has to be in between its horns right here there's a hard spot there's a soft spot that moves its eyes look see the soft spot this part of the gauge has to be against that hard part right there at the beginning of the shell i think it's called a car carapace right here this is called a carapace right on that ridge right there see that so there's a soft spot and there's you can move its eyes in the soft spot but then there's a hard spot right, be right behind the eyes where this starts that first part of the gauge has got to go there, and the second part of the gauge has to be right there. Look at, see, if this goes like that, then it's short. Okay, even if it clicks in, I wouldn't keep a clicker. That's what you call a clicker. Okay, so this is legal by like a sixteenth or like one thirty seconds of an inch. Okay, so that's one. And here's a bigger one. Choo! Okay, this is big. This is big time legal. Check it out. So we put it right there, right against, right against the hard spot, and boom! Look at that. That's a good one. Okay, there it is. Uh, before I let you guys go, I want to cover a few things. How long should you soak your hoop nets for? I recommend you soak these hoop nets for anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes before you pull them up. Uh, if you get a lobster on that drop, put the hoop net back where it was. And if you don't get a lobster, relocate it to a different zone or different area. Also, as far as choosing a place to put your hoop net down, uh, choose places that are near structure, near rocks, not on the rocks, because if, if the hoop net is on the rock, it'll be kind of sideways, but, but close to rocks, kind of where the rocks meet the sand. That's a nice little area. 
any transitions. Look for transitions between uh, structure and sand or structure and graft, okay? That'd be, those are all good places for you to put your hoop net down. If you have any questions for me regarding this video or any of the hoop netting videos in this series, you can leave it in the comments below. Or you can also find me on Twitch when I'm live streaming and I'm always open to answering questions from the chat. Also, uh, in case you didn't know, we're still doing fishy hour. We're doing fishy hour on Mondays and Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come hang out. Uh, on Mondays, it's, it's uh, fishing reports and we talk about the current fishing situation and um, techniques and I answer questions and all that good stuff. And on Wednesdays, we do bay fishing with Roman and Brian. Uh, at Brian likes to fish on Instagram. He's on with me on Wednesdays and we do like a co-hosted show where again, we cover more specifically bay fishing here in Southern California. So come join us, have fun. I'll put a link for that also down, down there in the description. We moved Fishy Hour to its own channel. It's now Fishy Hour with Roman on YouTube. And again, so that's, those are the places you'll find me. Monday, Fishy Hour, Fishy Hour with Roman here on YouTube. Tuesdays on Twitch, romancaster.com forward slash Twitch. Wednesdays, it's Bay Fishing with Roman and Brian on the Fishy Hour channel. That's also linked in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, or catch me on one of those live shows. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, Catching These Lobsters. If you did, you might want to check out this video next. I'll see you over there.